welcome everyone to worship at Good Samaritan Lutheran Church online. Great to have you with us today. We are in the new sanctuary once again, wanting to let you see what's coming. Absolutely. And this is our new baptismal feature. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but you need to imagine this is actually a water wall. So the water's going to come up here. It's going to kind of flow out of this reservoir down the front. We're going to put a nice baptismal feature here. And it's going to, between the rock and, and, and this, it's going to make this part of the altar area just seem really a dynamic and then of course you put a fine looking gentleman like pastor scott up here and it's just going to complete the whole picture but we're glad that you're with us this morning and as we get ready to move forward in our time of worship we always want to encourage you to see if you can to create a worshipful place as you get ready to do online worship and now that could be a quieter place in your house possibly it could involve just kind of pausing the video taking a couple of deep breaths, lighting a candle or two to kind of put yourself in that worshipful place and asking God to come and be a part of this time of worship with you and or your family members. We're continuing our sermon series today. It's called In the Grip of Grace, yeah. In the Grip of God's Grace, obviously. And so we just pray that that's going to be a meaningful message for you that you can apply in your life as well. You do a pretty good job with this one. Uh, you got a, Stay a, tuned. a special guest. Uh, it's going to be a part of the message, and I think you're going to enjoy that quite a bit. How about a prayer? Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we are just once again so very thankful for your presence in our lives. Uh, just ask that you would bless this time of worship today. For those that are here online watching this worship service, that you would strengthen them in their faith, renew them in their life through this time of worship. Use the songs or the message or the prayers to really help them feel the touch of your Holy Spirit and the, the renewal that comes from feeling the touch of their master's hand. Bless each and every person who has made time in their lives to worship this day. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now you're going to hear this beautiful worship song called Everlasting God.
So a taxi driver dies and ends up at the pearly gates and St. Peter greets him there. And St. Peter said, what's your name? And the taxi driver said, my name is James Larson. And uh, I was hoping I could get into heaven. And St. Peter said, well, James, I need to check the list and see if you're on it. And so St. Peter went, consulted his list, came back and said, great news, James, you're on the list. And so I wanna give you this beautiful purple robe. I wanna give you this golden staff as you enter through the pearly gates into heaven. Now in back of James was a pastor. Uh, the pastor's name I need to kind of keep anonymous. I hope you might understand why, but the pastor's at the pearly gates. He sees what's happened with James, the taxi driver. And so he says, St. Peter, I'm here. And St. Peter said, well, what's your name? Pastor gave him his name. He went and St. Peter, that is, went and checked the list. And he comes back and he says, yeah, you're on it, pastor. And he said, here, let me give you a robe. And he gets a simple white, um, nothing special, kind of cotton robe, and then a wooden staff. And the pastor accepts it and he says, you know, I, I don't understand. He said, I've been a pastor for over 50 years and I get this simple robe and wooden staff. And I saw James, the taxi driver, he got a purple robe, it had jewels in it. He got a golden staff. He said, what's the deal? And St. Peter said, well, you don't understand pastor, I guess. He said, we work on results up here in heaven. And he said, when you preached, people slept. But when James drove his taxi, they prayed. <laughs> well, I hope you don't fall asleep during this sermon. But you know what? There's something in that joke that we need to talk about. Because it, it's a common misconception of how we get into heaven. Because I'll guarantee you, you've maybe said it, or at least you've heard people say that you get into heaven by being a good person. Uh, in the joke, St. Peter said, well, we're based on results up here. Uh, the reality is, I hate to break it to you, is that's not how it works. God's word is very clear about that. We don't get to heaven because we've been so good. We get to heaven because God is so good because God sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins and my sins so that Jesus's sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection take care of paying the price and then setting us free and that's what we call grace God's undeserved love God's undeserved um, riches that he gives to us simply because he loves you and me. And that's why Pastor Don started this sermon series last week, and I'm continuing it this week, that we call in the grip of grace, in the grip of God's grace, because we want to remind you that you are in the grip of God's grace, that God's grace is there for you, that God's love is there for you, God's forgiveness is there for you. And while we are not against doing good things, we have to understand that we do them as a result of understanding that we have been given his grace, that we are given his love. And so we respond with good works. We don't do the good things in order to get to heaven or in order to get a nicer robe or staff once we're there, but we do them out of thankfulness for who God is. And so I want to share with you today, briefly, just three things about God's grace. Three things about God's grace that I hope you can remember. And the very first thing is that God's grace is divine. God's grace is divine. Uh, and what I mean by that, of course, is that it's of God, it's from God, right? It's also divine, if you look at the other meaning of divine in the dictionary, uh, it, it means it's something very special, and God's grace is that too. And so God's grace is divine. It's from God, and it is very special. Now, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, said this in chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. He said, for all have sinned, that's you and me, all have sinned, and fall short 
of the glory of God, and all are justified by his grace through the, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. That's what I alluded to earlier. When Jesus went to the cross and when he took upon himself your sins, my sins, and the sins of the entire world, the sins of the past and the sins of the future, the sins of today, he took all of that upon himself because of his tremendous love for you and for me. We all have sinned, but God has given his grace, Paul says, his grace, and his grace justifies us. That means that uh, in God's eyes, it's just as if we've never sinned. That's the un unpacking of that word, if you will, justified through the redemption, through the price that was paid for you by Jesus on the cross. And so it's very important to understand that God's grace is divine. Now, secondly, God's grace is overflowing. It's overflowing. And um, I, I, I think of Psalm 23. A lot of you know that psalm. And David in the psalm says, You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. David understood that all of these great things that God gives to us are such blessings and so wonderful. And because of that, our cup overflows too. But God's grace is overflowing. In 2 Corinthians 4.15, Paul says, all this is for your sake. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, they will offer to the glory of God more prayers of thanksgiving. As God's grace reaches more and more people. In the original Greek language, the word could be translated abundant. And in the translation I read, they parse it out, if you will, and make it more and more people. But the point is the same. God's grace is overflowing, and by that I would say there's more than enough for you. There's more than enough for your family members. There's more than enough for your neighbors. There's more than enough for this whole city of Las Vegas and for Clark County and the state of Nevada. There's more than enough of God's grace because it's overflowing for the United States. In fact, there's more than, uh, there's more than enough of God's grace for the whole world. I mean, when do you run out of love? And when does God's love run out? It doesn't. And neither does his grace. And that's why we believe, too, here at Good Samaritan, that it's important to let others know about God's saving grace, that God's love is for them, that his forgiveness is for them, that he's for them and not against them. God's grace is overflowing for you and for all people, for more and more people. Um, Pastor Don and I filmed the introduction to this service in the new sanctuary, and I had to move in here because they're busy in the new sanctuary right now, uh, but I needed to move in here. But in that new place, we're gonna have more room for more people. And the point is not to lift up Good Samaritan, but the point is to lift up God's kingdom so that more and more people can experience God's overflowing grace and God's divine grace. Now, the last point that I want to make is that God's grace is a gift. It's a gift. Uh, there's nothing that you can do to get it. He just gives it to you because he loves you. Paul in Ephesians, his letter to the Ephesian church said this, for by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty special gift. Uh, it's a gift we don't deserve, but it's a gift that God gives. And it's so important to remember that because it tells us something about God, about who he is and how he loves you. And so remember that God's grace is a gift. It is divine, it is overflowing, and it is a gift. Now look at those three words, divine, overflowing, and gift. Look at the first three letters, and what do they spell? D-O-G, D-O-G, dog. Now, Job, in his um, 
in the Old Testament, book of Job, it says this, but ask the animals, ask the animals and they will teach you the birds of the air and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you and the fish of the sea will declare to you who among these, the animals, the birds, the fish, the plants, who among these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? And what they mean by that is creation and this beautiful place that we call home. Ask the animals. I need to run home for a second. Hang with me, I'll be right there, but just give me a second till I get home because I want to ask an animal something. Well, it, I'm kind of out of energy after running home, but I wanted you to meet Dolly. She is our special guest today that Pastor Don mentioned early on. And if you can't guess, Dolly's my dog. And the verse in Job said, ask the animals and they will tell you. And so I want to ask Dolly what she might want us to know about God and God's grace. Hey, Dolly, Dolly, what should we tell them? Oh, really? Okay. Hey, Dolly's got a video she wants you to see. It's a really neat video that she thinks, and I think too, is a great um, illustration of what God's love is like. And all you have to do is ask the animals. They'll let us know. So enjoy the video, please. I look up and I see God. I look down and see my dog Simple spelling G-O-D Same word backwards D-O-G They would stay with me all day I'm the one who walks away But both of them just wait for me And dance at my Both love me no matter what, Divine God and Canine Mutt. I take it hard each time I fail, but God forgives, Dog wags his tail. God thought up and made the dog, Dog reflects a part of God. I've seen love from both sides now, it's everywhere, amen, bow wow. I look up and I see God, I look down and see my dog, and in my human frailty, I can't match their love. Well, I hope you like that video as much as Dolly and I do. I think that has so much to say to us. And I have to finish up the sermon back at the church, so I have to run back there. I'll see you there in just a couple seconds. All right. <laughs> I just hurried back to church. D-O-G, God's grace, is divine, it's overflowing, and it's a gift. I hope you caught that in that kind of fun, touching video. Now, if you're a cat person, I apologize, but uh, Dolly and I like that video, and I know a lot of people do too, but it, it's just another way of reminding you that you are in the grip of God's grace. Believe me, when I look at Dolly every day, especially after preparing this sermon, I remember God's grace. And if you can remember dog, D-O-G, that God's grace is divine, that God's grace is overflowing, that God's grace is a gift, then you'll remember three very important things about what it means to be in the grip of grace. And my prayer for you is that that's going to enable you to face each day and every trial that might come your way 
in an easier manner, knowing that you are in the grip of God's grace. God bless you now and always. Amen. thank you that we can come to you during this time of prayer. We pray for our world. We pray for our nation, our state, our local community. We lift up the leaders uh, around the world uh, and locally, and we just pray that your Holy Spirit would work in them as they're making important decisions about so many things right now. So please guide them. Uh, please help us to always remember to pray uh, for them. And then, Lord, we also pray for the doctors and nurses and frontline workers, the people in the grocery stores and so many different places who uh, still uh, have to deal with the coronavirus. And even though things are getting better, we pray for protection over them. Uh, we pray for those who have the coronavirus and ask that you would bring healing to them. Be with the families of those who've lost loved ones. Uh, we pray for people who are un unemployed, people who are... Uh, dealing with financial setbacks. 
We just ask that your hand would give them comfort and strength and hope. We pray for those who are dealing with illness of other nature. Maybe it's a cancer or heart issues, whatever it might be, but there's so many folks, Lord, that are dealing with that. And you're the great physician, and so remind them that you're there for them, that you will never leave them or abandon them. Uh, And then we pray for healing for folks we lift up in our minds right now. For those who've lost loved ones, we pray that you would give them comfort and hope, the hope that we have of the life to come because of Jesus and what he's done for us and how he loves us. Lord, we lift up our school and our church, thankful for the many blessings that you've given to us, and then just praying that you would give us the direction and the strength that we need to go in the days ahead uh, to further the advancement of your kingdom in this place. And so, so many things we pray for right now. And then together, we pray the prayer that you taught us as one of the students at our Good Samaritan Christian Academy, Amira Salsa, leads us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us. Don't leave us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. So once again, we are just so glad that you worshiped with us today. Uh, I pray that your soul was fed through this time of online worship. During this time, it is so important that we find these moments in our lives to get in touch with God, to focus our hearts and our minds on God. There's so much distracting us right now. I'm glad you took the time to do that. That's right. And so just a few announcements. There was a Super Bowl, Don, Pastor Don. There was. We, every year we do a Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R, in order to raise money for food ministries here in Las Vegas. This year it was going to be divided between Lutheran Social Services in Nevada and their food ministry, and then, of course, the good the food distribution ministry here at Good Samaritan. Now, normally in the past, as I understand it, our voting has not predicted the winner. For years and years, the person that won the Super Bowl, S-U-P-E-R Bowl, has not won our Soup Bowl. But this year, for the first time in years, drum roll please, Kansas City, $89, Tampa Bay, $94. Tampa Bay wins both Super Bowls. I, for those of you that watch the game, Tom Brady, He's whether, the whether you like him or not, the man knows how to win. So There's something to be said for being older. And you know what? There is something to be said for being older. Absolutely. All the wisdom that comes with that. And then, of course, we want to make sure that uh, we remind you, if you haven't done so already, to please pick up your Lent kit. We've put these together for everyone. Uh, we, it really saves us postage and running around if you come by and pick one up. Uh, but if not, let us know. We'll make sure we get it into your home, whether we send it to you in the mail or we drop it off in person. Just call the church office. We want to make sure. Because in this Lent kit is... Some ashes for Ash Wednesday, which is the 17th. And now we're going to be live streaming our service at 7 p.m. on Ash Wednesday evening. And then this way would be a great way for you to be participating in that with us. Yes. Or, of course, you can come to the church as well if you so choose. Yeah, we really want you to get one. Devotion books in there, another really good book. Also some communion kits. There's just some things in here to help celebrate this time of Lent. So there's other things going on. but um, Those are, please find those in the link below on our website so that you can find out what's going on, how you get involved, because there's new Bible studies that you can be a part of. There's always the podcast, the Good News at Noon, all these different ways that we want to continue to connect with you and connect you to God. So just make sure that you're reading about those different ways as well. How about the benediction? I would love that. Now, my friends, please receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God always look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as you leave today, just remember that you are in the grip of God's grace. And if you can't remember that, remember dog, because God's grace is divine and God's grace is overflowing and God's grace is a gift. And so I just pray that you'll remember that and it'll be a blessing to you today and in all the days to come as well. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.